I want to ask you a bunch of questions, and I want to have them answered immediately. Hasta la vista, baby. Hello everyone and welcome to Nocturnal Horrors. My name is Sean Maserol and I'm very excited today because I have a special guest, Desmond's Flicks, who is, should I say it, like you're an action aficionado as well as a horror aficionado? What do you think? I, maybe a little bit. I think because, you know, growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, there was so much action goodness. And um, I'm so stoked to be here, man. I'm excited, dude. I'm excited too, especially because, you know, I think we kind of grew up in the same era, so I think we're going to have a lot of crossover of same movies watched, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. So today, we are going to talk about the one, the only, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and basically for this, for this video, it's going to be us discussing Arnold in his action films a little bit, but more so his... His, you know, his walk into the horror genre a little bit with End of Days and Maggie. So we'll start with the action, discuss Arnold a little bit, why we love him, why we hate him, whatever it comes to, and then we'll dig into the horror of it. So Desmond, start us off. Thoughts on Arnold? How did you first get to know him? Favorite movie? Anything you want, anywhere you want to go, take it away. Oh man, what? Where can I start with Arnold? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much awesomeness in his filmography. Uh, probably my earliest memory of watching Arnold on film was Commando. And that is one of my all-time favorite movies. You know, I had, and, and I was a little kid when I watched this, so Alyssa Milano was a little kid. And that's where, <laughs> like, my crush on Alyssa Milano started. That and, like... <laughs> Oh, uh, what was the show that she was on? Who's the boss? Uh, yes, who's the boss? <laughs> Tony Danza, man. Come yeah. on. <laughs> and um, I always loved watching that movie. You know, he's walking around with the big, um, you know, freaking launcher. This Radon Chong is in it. How 80s oh, is yes. that? Um, You're kidding me. <laughs> exactly. So, like, Commando was one, Predator was one I watched over and yeah. over again. And um, yeah. he was a big part of my childhood. Him and like mm -hmm. Van Damme and Sick, all those guys were like yeah. my go-to for, yeah. for anything action movie related. So I, I love George. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was the same. I think Commando was like the one I had taped on VHS and like I wanted to literally be able to hold the tree <laughs> over my shoulder and like, feed the deer with with little Alyssa Milano you know what I mean like it is like so brilliant and then I mean Commando is everything there's nothing about it it's it's the epitome of 80s action in terms of one man takes over everything and does whatever needs to be done and of course Arnold does it right and then so yeah for me it was Commando it was Predator um but like a little bit later on right like it was like Predator for me and Total Recall. You're just watching over and over and over again. Um, and then it gets to like the Terminator films and Terminator 1 for me was like, it was still like a little indie, but like when Terminator 2 hit, I was like, like, what is this? Like the CGI was like incredible, it like blew my mind at that point. And, and Arnold was just amazing. and. I didn't know where to go from there. Like it was just the epitome of excellence in action movies. You know what I mean? Um, and his one-liners, yeah. the one-liners. <laughs> you know, right? Commando was uh, let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we, go are we going there? Are we gonna, are we gonna do impersonations right there? Yeah. We're gonna start right off the bat and just go right into it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just there's just so much and. Uh, yeah, and I mean, like, True Lies, like, all of it is just so good. Like, I I love Last Action Hero, too, you know what I mean? I mean, it's amazing. It, it's all amazing. But, like, he was also able to really, like, venture into the comedy and did comedy so well. Like, Kindergarten Cop is, like, unbelievable, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm sorry, it's just genius. <laughs> or even Twins, uh, where he's, like, yeah. he's singing on the plane going, like, Take out the papers and the trash. 
Take out the papers and the trash. Or you don't get no spending cash. If you don't scrap that kitchen floor, you ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Yakety yak. Don't talk back. Da -da -da -da. And it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it, it, he nails it. He nails it. Like he, like he know who he is. He knows who he is. He knows what he's good at and what he's bad at, and he plays off that. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't know if you've seen like Hercules in New York before. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's like they have the Arnold version where you literally can't understand what the hell he's saying. I am tired of the same old phrases. The same old things. And then they have the dubbed version. I'm tired of the same old faces. The same old thing. And it's just like, so far. He came so far, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a lot, a lot going on with Arnold. And I think realistically, like, oh man. You know, not that I necessarily want to get into this, but like, he's... <laughs> Like, he is an inspiration in so many ways, and he can be a role model in so many ways, but he's also done terrible, terrible things, and, and been a very not-so-great guy, you know, the, you know the, the male toxic, the masculinity thing, you know. Like, Arnold is the epitome of that as well, unfortunately, but, you know, growing up, like, I'm just watching his movies, and I'm just loving his movies, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and not taking it any, anywhere else in that, you know? Arnold is the reason why I got into fitness, you know, seeing him and pumping iron, like, even yeah, to this day, it's like, I've, I've watched pumping iron so many times, and just, you know, yeah. listening to him talk about weightlifting, I'm like, all right, I gotta go to the gym right now and, and work out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pumping iron is amazing, like, yeah. I mean, just to have, uh, you know, you got Franco Colombo there, his, his bestie, and then, I mean, you got Lou Ferrigno and, <laughs> yeah. and his dad, right? Like, just <laughs> yeah. trying to take over. And then you get, <laughs> just, you got Arnold, like, in his Arnold is numero uno shirt, like, smoking his <laughs> weed after, like, he's yeah. won the seventh Mr. Olympia. And it's just, like, it's, like, oh, man, it's so perfect in, like, so many, so many ways. Um, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I ended up, I... I met Arnold and uh, I was wearing that shirt. It was at like a Barnes and Noble uh, signing when he had his uh, autobiography come out. And uh, I like purposely wore the, the Arnold is numero uno shirt, hoping it could like get me somewhere. And it totally did. There was like a press guy who was like, hey, that's a good shirt. You like want to come closer? And I was like, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I like got to like stand behind him as he's like giving his spiel and stuff. like. He, he like shook my hand. He was like, it was just like, it was like screaming like a little ridiculous child. Like it was just like <laughs> everything I ever imagined it could be. It was ridiculous. And uh, I'm so jealous. Wow. You met Arnold was, Schwarzenegger. That's amazing. It was crazy. I had tried, I, I, I was like close to meeting him a couple times. Um, like there was a premiere of one of the movies where I worked on and he was at the premiere, but like, I had saw him from afar, but like that was it. And then like um, I even got to go to his house to so he could watch a screener of one of our films. And but I never got to see him. So I got to like walk through his house, walk through like his his theater room, and walk into his like family room to like set up the the screening and everything. And then <laughs> he like comes home. Um, to watch the movie um, and before he gets in they like shuttle me over into the, like the little security hut and like <laughs> I have to sit I just sit there for like two hours and the whole time I'm like I'm like writing down everything I could possibly remember from like when I'm walking through the house I'm like oh and I gotta remember this and I gotta remember this <laughs> and I was like please Arnold come say hello in the security this random security house uh, he did not <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, Ar Arnold was always the like number one person I was like hoping to meet, you know, in all the film industry. Like he was my guy I needed to meet, you know. Um, That's wild, so yeah. dude. Yeah, it's bizarre. Um, so, and then Arnold decided to transition into horror movies. <laughs> um, so, like I said, we have End of Days and we have Maggie. And realistically, like, 
you know, he's really, he's always on the the edge, right? He's always on the cusp of horror, but like right. sci-fi, right? Like you can call Terminator a slasher film. You can, you know, you can, you can go into those like little conversations if you want to, but he's always, he's always been there, but never fully went, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I, end of and then end of days, you know, <laughs> which is like we're gonna go straight into horror and we're just we're gonna battle the devil because I'm Arnold and the devil is the only one that can match me apparently, you know. <laughs> and we have Robin Tooney in here along with freaking Gabriel Burns. Like, mm-hmm. how late nineties can you be with this cast? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it really is. Uh, I mean. The only thing stopping it from being like epitome '90s is like if Gary Busey was somehow in it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, then it would just have been total like perfection. If, um, if he was his partner, he could have used that moment to be like, "Hey, Jericho, two, two, give me two meatballs." <laughs> yeah. Who needs what is it? Kevin Pollock? Who needs Kevin yeah, Pollock? Come yeah. On. Yeah. Just put Gary Busey, Busey in there. Oh yeah. my God! Can you imagine Schwarzenegger and Busey? With freaking Gabriel Byrne, that would have been amazing. They would have hated each other. <laughs> it would have been There's no way around it. There's no way around it for sure. Um, <laughs> so I guess. So what did you think of End of Days? So this was my first time watching this film. I'd never seen it. I remember seeing it like being promoted on um, MTV way back in the day, back in 1999. And yeah. um, man, it was fun. It's dumb as hell. It's so dumb, but it was yeah. so much fun. Like, it had those late 90s uh, CGI effects where it's like, you can tell they were really trying to make something look cool. They were like, oh, check out this devil we have. He's <laughs> like a freaking smoke demon. But, but it's like, like Stan Winston, isn't it? I think it's Stan Winston, too. It is, and it looks... It's like a mix of CGI with, like, his glory, and it just, like, doesn't fully come yeah. off. Yeah, <laughs> he kind of just looks like a... It's almost as bad as, like, the big turd zombie monster thing that was in Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as, like, art-looking, but yeah. it it has that look to it where I was like, Oh, you should have just kept it as freaking Gabriel <laughs> yeah. Byrne, dude. Because the, the practical effects with like you know his like stomach falling out and you could see his bones. Oh, man, I was yeah. like, that's dope. <laughs> Do that. Come on. But I have fun yeah. with it. I have fun with this movie. It's 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 dumb, stupid fun, and it totally plays into that late '90s uh, hysteria about Y2K and the yep. impending doom. And yep. there. There were so many movies coming out like this with really big stars that hadn't really been in horror, at least not mm-hmm. that much. There was, right. of course, this was Schwarzenegger. There was Patricia Arquette in Stigmata. And there was and Kim right. Basinger in Bless the Child. All, Basinger, yeah. <laughs> they're all pretty <laughs> middling films, but <laughs> they're like such a perfect little ca- time capsule of it's like... A little, yeah, it's a little Yeah. <laughs> No, that's a good point. That's a great point. I th- and it's interesting, too, because I guess, like, when they were shooting it, well, when they are going through production, they had, like, a director, and the director, like, had to bow out because of weird, like, contract things that he had written out and, like, manifestos that he had written out, and everyone was like, what is this? <laughs> and then they had to hire, like, Peter Hyams, like, on the fly, and they were like it was like already 1999 like they had to start filming you know what i mean like you have a small window you know <laughs> um and then arnold was just this is this is the like the first movie back for him from his uh his his major heart surgery like his first major major heart surgery and uh so like all the studio heads were like like, can we drop a hundred million budget on an Arnold movie where he might cl- collapse and die doing a stunt? You know what I mean? Right. Like, and, uh, and I mean, this one's, oh, man. it's, yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous film. It makes no sense to me. What It makes no sense whatsoever. Like, <laughs> if the devil can do certain things and then, like, can't find this girl, like, where is this girl? I'm only <laughs> the devil and I can't find this girl. 
in New York. And uh, like, what? Um, <laughs> I need to find then, Robin Tooney this minute. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, none of it makes any sense. But like, like you said, it is still like good, dumb fun. It runs a little long, let's be honest. But like, it's definitely like that first film where Arnold isn't fully Arnold, you know? Where Arnold in all of his other movies, minus the kiss comedies, but he's, he is the everything. He is the guy in every scene. He's the one with all this confidence and there is no self doubt. And he just knows that he can do everything to, to get anything done. He, he, he does it all right. And in this film, you know, he doesn't show up in the first 12 minutes of the film and then his opening scene, which is fantastic. It's just him wanting to, you know, having the gun to his head and then making that amazing milkshake filled with everything that is in his apartment like and you're like okay we're we're seeing a different arnold here he's like, he's a little pessimistic in this one you know um and i love that like i love the the switch on it but at the same time like you still want arnold you know what i mean you, yeah you, you always want the arnold can we talk about gabriel burns amazing intro in this film <laughs> we can we oh can. my god so this dude at first he's just like some regular dude going out for dinner with like his friends and he's yeah. like oh i'm gonna go use the bathroom and the devil is like flying around outside Ooh. i know and he's like mm, not quite that what i don't want and he's like flying around being like hmm who do i want to take over he, he takes over real burn he wants <laughs> i mean who wouldn't who would it? Late, late 90s Gabriel Byrne. I mean, he was pretty dope. And, but it's interesting. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and he comes out of the bathroom, goes right to the chick, puts his hand over her boob and just pulls it out, makes out with her, and then walks out of the building and makes a blow up. <laughs> That's our introduction to Gabriel Byrne. What is happening? There's great intros to these characters. <laughs> there really is. I mean, that one's pretty legit. And it, it's weird though because it's so like I feel like I love the Devil's Advocate. So, and I feel like there's like like Gabriel Byrne is like the cheap version of Al Pacino's Devil, <laughs> right? Like, like, like they're like, well, we have to pay all this money to Arnold, so maybe we just get like Gabriel Byrne, you know, like who's fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but. He is the B-level look of Al Pacino, you know? <laughs> and it's like, even when it comes down to, like, the, like, the ridiculous threesome where it's like... Oh, my God! The, like, weird CGIing moment. Like, the devil's advocate has that, too, and it has it so much better, you know what I mean? Like, in terms of the special effects, in terms of the scene, like, all of it. It's just done so much better. And then, like... But then Gabriel ha has those great moments where he's like... Love the shirt, you know, whatever the <laughs> line is. Hey, I like the shirt. <laughs> like, it's such a ridiculous movie. Like, it makes no sense. None but of it, it makes sense at all. <laughs> it's got like an 11%, I think, on like Rotten Tomatoes from uh, the critics and like maybe like 32%. But That tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for once like Rotten Tomatoes is on point there <laughs> but yeah I think it's just like it's one of those films that's just like it's great and so not great simultaneously <laughs> oh yeah um, I, I, I just I, I love the randomness I love the fact that you know Gabriel burns the devil and he just won't stop and he keeps talking to Arnold and he's like don't you watch your life back you know you do. Hey, here's your family. See them? I'm gonna kill them again. <laughs> and Arnold's like, you, you can't do this to me. <laughs> and it's just like, it's amazing. Anytime I see Arnold just like doing his thing, it's so much fun. And he gets crucified. He got crucified he in does. the movie. He does. We, have, we have like a priest that walks down the street, does like the <laughs> sign of the cross and is like, Man, should probably get him down from there. <laughs> and how do they get him back? Who helped him? Bro, he's Arnold. What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty ridiculous. I, I... 
<laughs> I don't even know why like the devil doesn't just kill Arnold. It makes no sense to me. Just so he can be like, look at this. Like, <laughs> like you said, like let me like replay everything that you already know for the audience so that we can hold on a little bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we it's, we need to hit this two hour uh, two hour running time. So uh, how about we go ahead and do a little bit of exposition? So bad. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but then you still have like one or two quintessential lines. You know, he's got the like you're a choir boy compared to me or whatever it is. Like it's just so good. You're a choir boy. Precisely. <laughs> That's not very um, good, but I love doing Arnold. Bigger. That's fair. That's <laughs> totally fair. It's totally fair. Um, yeah, good film. Good film. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, uh, to, so let's try and be uh, let's try and be fair here. Arnold does try and do some some serious acting uh, at points, like in that you know the the weird scene with the kid and his wife. Uh, he does do he does do some acting. Um, and let's compare that with Maggie, right? Where he's now he's he's decades older, and uh, he's playing a very against role role, <laughs> um, and he's just a dad trying to take care of his kid who's uh, <sighs> turning into something. <laughs> um, but Maggie does have that you know an interesting premise where it's you know. You have a, a longer window, a longer time frame of watching the transformation, right, of Abigail Breslin, um, which is cool. Like, I think that was a cool idea. Um, overall, Maggie, I would say it's a slow burn, and I do enjoy slow burns, but, like, not this one. Like, I did, it didn't really work for me. Um, I do think Arnold did pretty good. Like, I... I I didn't have a problem with his acting like the acting is good like for the most part it's it's a well done film like it just it kind of bored me you know what do you think yeah I felt the same way and this was also another first time watch for me um nice. and I, I I always appreciate it when when Arnold plays against type it's cool seeing him you know try to flex his you know his acting muscles more um and I liked him in this. I like I liked the cast overall, and yeah. I, I liked the the vibe the film gave, and it had a lot of potential. There was a lot yeah. there, uh, but I agree. It just and, and this was shorter than uh, End of Days by like oh, yeah. almost half an hour. I think <laughs> didn't feel it though, did it? No, it really dragged, and <laughs> that was the part that was disappointing for me. Uh, because after I watched it, I was like, I don't really know what to really say about this movie because I feel like nothing really happens, really. Like, it's yeah. it's him trying to, you know, save his daughter from, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's, I don't know. And, and for the slow burn that it is, <clears throat> the ending really didn't have the payoff that it should have had. Yeah, I think, uh, for me, the ending is is bad like the film and it's not just like me wanting more Arnold or anything like that the film I felt like the film set set itself up to have Arnold the dad you know and obviously spoilers all over the place you know um, but the film set up Arnold the dad to make a decision right like am I going to bring my kid into the the quarantine zone and have them do what they do to her am i going to try and run and just have her live somehow some way because i can't do what needs to be done or am i straight up either going to give her the shot the injection or take the shotgun to her right like those for me i felt like that's what they set up that was going to be the payoff to see what his decision would be and instead we get we got sleepy arnold you know like and i was like oh sleepy arnold like sure he's technically not really asleep but sleepy arnold and like he's not even there's no decision ever made it the the decision was 
her decision and I totally get that that makes perfect sense because she's the one you know um, but I felt like the film set up where Arnold was going to be the one that we need to see that decision and we didn't see it and it and that pissed me off <laughs> Yeah, like, why even introduce anything earlier on where, you know, I think it's like when he's, like, speaking to one of the police officers, of like, you're going to have to make a decision at some point. Yeah, they straight up say, yeah. you're going to make, it, you have to make a decision, and it's like, okay, that's what we expect. If you set this up, we expect to see that. Yeah, and then just, we, we it, 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 yeah, it all fell apart at the end, and, um, yeah. you know... It was just like I I was waiting for him to take her out back like old Yeller, but that <laughs> didn't happen. And I cried at you know reading old Yeller as a kid. Right for so. And I'm like, come on, you need to pull the old Yeller here, man. You got to do it. And I I agree with you. I get the idea behind her doing it herself, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that would have been the perfect moment for like that huge acting moment for for arnold that we never really yeah. got in this film yeah. it was so subdued the whole time yeah to see her like as she's going down doing all the thinking of like her mom and stuff so now like the ending is like totally it has nothing to do with the dad and and i felt like the whole film was supposed to be mostly about the dad's journey for this kid you know as opposed to the kid's journey you know obviously they do go show the kid's journey a little bit more um they do veer into that um which is good um but yeah i just it didn't do it for me i this was my second watch and it, it was felt the same way with it so it's a bummer too because there was a lot of potential there was a lot of potential for something you know really special with this film yeah for sure yeah and I, yeah, it's just a bummer. And I think like Arnold, supposedly Arnold took like no money for it. He did it because he like really liked the script and, you huh. know, probably really wanted to show some of his acting prowess. And uh, yeah, just didn't do it. Didn't do it. But that's, that's Arnold in horror. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him oh. into more horror. It'd be cool. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, and like I said, he's always doing that tight walk, uh, you know, tightrope walk um, towards horror, but more sci-fi, you know. Um, he's so close. He is. But uh, I do think, like, when you're a megastar like that, like, probably doing a, a horror movies kind of probably bums him out. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, want more end of days, Arnold. <laughs> Suicidal Arnold. <laughs> I, I want that, just the Arnold running around beating up Gabriel Byrne. It was amazing. It's I want fair. more of that. It's totally fair. He was enjoyable in that, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. He, like, I keep going back to End of Days because, I mean, that ending was ridiculous. That was such, it was epic. Oh, yeah. Like, it was. <laughs> I, like, I want to watch it again already because it you was should. just. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is, like, good stuff in it. Like, it is, like, a high-budget film. Like, when he's, like, coming down from the helicopter and they're, like, going over the buildings, you're yes. like, are you kidding me? Like, this is fantastic. <laughs> you know? This is fantastic. You this is I mean? fantastic. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good, you know? There's some good moments. Um, what do yeah. you mean he has no tongue? <laughs> <laughs> I just spoke to him. I mean, yeah, and then I guess, like, Arnold, like, didn't like the director either because um, he was, like, shooting it. Apparently, he was, like, shooting it too dark, and Arnold kept being like, we need to see what we're doing, you know? <laughs> the audience needs to see me, like, kicking ass, and, like, I guess, like, the director was like, you're on that Jim Cameron shit, bro. Like, he <laughs> overlights everything, and Arnold was like, what the do you know but like i guess like jim cameron like said that peter hyams was would be like a good director for this so like arnold went with it but Please, God, help me. all right and i think that's uh that's about it for what we have with arnold um in terms of horror i'm pretty sure desmond and i can like embarrassingly <laughs> embarrassingly talk about arnold forever and ever and you know 
we would get so many more impressions from Desmond <laughs> and I'm sure we'll get more. We'll probably get some more later. Who, who knows? But yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll wrap it here for sure. Uh, so Desmond, thank you. I really appreciate you going uh, down memory lane with me here and um, talking about good old Arnold. He's definitely one of my faves, clearly one of your faves. And if you haven't already, please go subscribe to Desmond's Flicks. He is an incredible YouTuber, and you're on Twitch now as well. Can you want to give a little lowdown of what you do on Twitch? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm over on Twitch. Uh, it's Desmond's Flicks, and I usually stream uh, old school uh, horror games, like uh, PS1, PS2 era games. So if you're into like Resident Evil and Silent Hill stuff and getting spooky, come on down and hang out. And thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. It was awesome. All right, guys. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. My name is Sean Maserol. This is Nocturnal Horrors, and thanks so much. Mm -hmm.